Needless to say, there's been a lot of reactions to the elections and some of them that you have just seen. Well, joining us to have a conversation around this, uh, those issues this morning is Dr. Bafemia Hamzat, as you've seen in the welcoming slide. He's the Deputy Governor of Lagos State and Deputy Governor-elect of Lagos State. How does that even sound? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. You know, uh, it, it sounds very nice that the people of Lagos mm. decided to renew our mandate. Mm. And... Uh, you know, I've listened to all sorts of commentary, mm. you know, about this election. And I think it's very unkind, very, very unkind for Nigerians. So Lagos has 13,325 polling units. Alimosho, for example, has 1,545. Only three values were recorded. Three out of 1,545. The whole of Lagos, 349. Polling units had issues with violence, disruption, 349 out of 13,325. So if you figure that out, that's 1%. So we all went to school. You don't get A if you, you, know, you don't get 100% in order to get A. Mm. But where do you think all of that is coming from, as, uh, at least listening to some of your, um, the other contestants? Well, unfortunately, people tend to be bad losers. So instead of re-examining what exactly happened? How do I get better? So uh, the PDP candidate was saying, we contested against INEC. We, no, the reality was you lost all your party members. Ade Dosumu left your party. Uh, uh, Wahabo Okonino left your party. Uh, Dohati left your party, who is the chairman of the PCC for Atiku Okowa and Jando in Lagos. The campaign, his own director, the campaign director for the PDP candidate resigned and left. So you lost everybody around you. And you know, going around and saying, so the question is, how did you manage your, your party? How? So you didn't do well. And the same thing with the Labour Party. Sumbo Onitiri, who contested for the House of the Senate for, for, for Central, left the party. The chairman of the party before, Salako, left the party and said that the man is all sorts of things. We all read what he said. So the reality is they are not really looking at the real issue, how to manage organizations. They don't have that experience. And that's the bottom line. People just left. So their house got divided. And you know, people voted. So to, to now ascribe all, the, all this effort, we run, look, in Nigerian election is probably the biggest anywhere in terms of monolithic election. Because we have a single ballot across the country. That's not what happens in, say, United States of America. Each county has their own different ballots. So we have the same ballot in Lagos that you have in Kara Namuda, that you have in Tarafa Marawa, all over the country. One single body is doing all this election. Over 177,000 polling units across the country. It's a logistic nightmare. Okay? So you have a country where your infrastructure is not 100%. Your logistic infrastructure is not 100%. Transportation is not 100%. So, and we expect INEC to just do a miracle and let everything just be perfect. No. But isn't that, isn't, is, is it too much to expect that? Because it, that is exactly what Nigerians expect. That is why we have had this continuous, unbroken democratic process in this Fourth Republic for 24 years now. So, that is what Nigerians expect. So, and so the that is why they, that is what they said they can do the job. Well, so, yes. So, the question is, if there is violence somewhere, INEC did not cause that violence. So we, have, we all have dependencies in life, okay? So if I'm doing a job, I depend on some other people to do certain things, right? So the reality is, what did that component do? The, the, the people that are taking dogs, by fighting other, are they, is that INEC? That's not INEC. Mm. So okay. if you take Lagos, for example, mm. um, but, people say, oh, violence. In Agor Palace, Agor Palace is part of Osho, the solo local government. They, they have close to 735 polling units, if my memory is correct. 50 polling units are the issue of violence. What happened? And that's what I expect commentators 
to actually examine what is the issue. The issue is this. In Agatha Palace, we have 21, and interestingly, they are showing it on your channel. They have 21 gated estates. Unfortunately, INEC did not say you have a monopoly of your polling booths within your estate. So there can be people outside, four or five people that will be voting in that estate. Unfortunately, people lock the gate to prevent people from coming in. So that's part of the problem. Say, so, no, you can't disenfranchise me, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the issues. So what do we do next time? Should we just put it outside or something? So those are the issues that we need to look at. But How do we make sure that we don't cause these issues within communities? Because you place the polling unit inside the estate, and there are people that are supposed to come in to, to go and vote, and they were on the charts, and they were unhappy about it. But so, that, just a second, you know, you've, you've spoken to figures. So there's a place of figures, but then there's also the place of emotions. And there are a number of people during the uh, uh, election studios who said, look, politics is a game of passion. And that is also very, uh, it's been very prominent in this election, all kinds of passions being expressed and all of that, which has crossed, caused huge divides among us. How do we begin to mend fences? Lagos is Nigeria in a microscope, literally. We have to find a way to, bump, to, to bind ourselves together. We have to unite. That is what Lagos is known for. That is why people come to Lagos listening to your, your, your president, the president-elect who is also a member of your party over the years. It's people come to Lagos, not for whatever reason, but to have a good life. No sentiments whatsoever. And it will seem like, dare I say, that the Lagos State government has failed before the elections to unite the people's emotions and focus on the purpose of, of the state. Well, I, I disagree with you. I mean, it's not that the state government failed. So you said we're people of emotion, but emotion is never a strategy. Okay? So the reality is that you do the greatest injustice to your brain as a human being when you speak without evidence. Because you start to kill your brain. Because So I can say, for example, that you are wearing a blue suit. It's the truth. But the whole truth is that you're also wearing a white shirt. So when I describe you, I cannot just say you are wearing a blue suit. I must say, well, you are wearing a black, a black shoe. So that's why when you go to court, they say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So the problem with us is that we take a snippet of the truth, not the whole truth, and we magnify it and diminish our country. Elections all over the world. We saw what happened in the United States. It's one of the greatest democracies in the world. Nobody says, oh, there are elections. No, no, no. So the reality is, what happened? And that's what Congress is trying to do. What happened? Why did people come here? And people, today I was just seeing it on your channel that about 300 and something people have been arrested for it. Let them be prosecuted. And that's the bottom line. If you commit a crime, let you be you know, prosecuted. And that's the way to do it. But to say that uh, the, this election is the worst, it's not true. And we must establish that fact. But Dr. This Abzett, is a fantastic election. The will of the people were in, all over the country. For the first time, we saw governors losing their Senate seat. Before, people just write this number. We have election before, during General Basanjo, where people, the vote received was more than the registered voters. That's not the case here in this case. There were beavers that accredited people. The issue of IREF that people are talking about, let's, let's look at let's examine it. The, the beavers is an electronic equipment that authenticates you. Remember, that database is already sealed. It's a static database. So INEC has said as at a certain date, I'm not registering anybody again. So it's, it's static. Therefore, INEC now checks to say, beavers, sorry, checks to say, is your name in that database or your iris, can, that, can I check it in my database? If it is there and it's assigned to this polling unit, that's all it does. We did not vote on beavers. Okay, so they gave you a physical paper. You turn pretend on it physically. You physically put it in a box. It was physically counted. So what, what exactly are we talking about? That, oh, electronic, what electronic? What are we talking about? So beavers take a picture of the result. Remember, when the result is counted, it is entered manually into a form. Everybody signs. So beavers, you use beavers to take a picture and you send it off. So, Go figure, how do you query a photo gallery? How? So when people say, let us, that's what I'm saying that, 
for us as an intelligent people, let us look at the process. And okay. it's not about emotion. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Amzad, you have quoted figures and you say that um, 349 polling units out of 13,000 plus polling units in Lagos is where uh, violence was recorded, is where we had logistical challenges. Uh, but 349 polling units could be representative of, uh, let's just say for a sample uh, 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 size now, representative of 100 voters that were disenfranchised and that's just being you know moderate it could be more are you what, what value should we now place on one vote one voter that could have been disenfranchised as a result of that exercise so don't let's get me wrong violence anywhere is wrong okay my point is it should be examined what happened if a crime has been committed people should be Look, you cannot isolate voting from the society, okay? People are voting. The people voting are not ghosts. They are Nigerians. So we have crime committed in our country every day. So election is also a microcosm of what happens in our society. So to now say that, oh, our election is, should be totally separate from who we are, it's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. So I'm saying that you have, if you have an exam as a student, you don't get a first class if you score if you, if you score 40 percent but if you score 18 90 percent that's a first class that means that in any society nobody expects you to have 100 percent but at so the end of the INEC day yeah. did not have 100 percent well, we'll, does we'll that mean they've done we'll, a bad we'll job we'll my point just, is just, no. just a quick follow-up on what you the question you asked the, the perhaps a more direct way to ask that question uh dr amzad is and from the, some of the candidates also they accuse the APC, your party in Lagos, of being the one at the forefront of fomenting trouble in those areas, 349 units that you talked well, about. Well, I don't see any proof. So the question is this. The people that said that, who said that those people that were disenfranchised would not vote for our party? We are the evidence. But in those videos, yes. sir, you know, the voters themselves, the people, the residents in the community were complaining that it was APC agents that came to this foment violence. In fact, in the uh, video that you referred to, uh, Agor Palace, with the ones that are being shared, besides the ones that we have, they accused a particular APC agent who was lynched, by the way, of coming in to foment violence to disrupt the process. Madam, and you find that in many areas. In Apapa, they accuse the APC of being responsible for the violence well so you know that's an accusation you know look i can come here and say anything it's an accusation that's what i said if anybody has committed any crime let them be prosecuted you understand so because the reality is that look i was commissioner for works in this state i was the commissioner when the road in Agro palace was, i know how many friends i have there that complain to me about and these are people that will vote for us so to, to suggest that our party will go there and disturb people that will vote for us, I think it's just okay, it doesn't well, I make guess, any I sense. I guess, as you said, it's something that needs to be proposed. My colleagues in Abuja have a question for you. Go ahead, guys. Uh, let me quickly come in. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Bafemi Hamzat. I'd like to find out from you uh, what you made of, because one of the things that has really, really worried people um, is the profiling that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, you might say that it, is, uh, it happened in a, a small number of polling units, but that it happened at all in a place as cosmopolitan as Lagos has made many people worry about, you know, Nigeria in general. I mean, it, Lagos usually is supposed to be a place that sets, sets example. So for you as deputy governor, how did that, I mean, the emergence of that and the imagery that came out of that worry you? Well, I think it's very unfortunate. I mean, uh, to profile people, to say that people should not vote because of what they look at, just absolute nonsense. And like I said, if it happens, there are videos, people should be arrested and prosecuted. That's the bottom line, you know. So my point, though, is that as a people generally, look, we are Africans. So we are Africans, and because we are Africans, we are regional based. That's who we are. That's why you will see a South African that will say, no, I'm from this part. You will see an Ogu man say, I'm an Ogu man. You will see an Ijaye man that say, I'm an Ijaye man. You will see a, an Igbo man that will say, I'm from Inewi. You see some, so because of that, there are some people that takes this thing over overboard. 
generally. That's why Mr. Nwaya will said uh, Yoruba political rascal. Not all the boys will say that. Although he has already denied that in the statement. He we heard it. We can't deny what we heard. So he can say he made a mistake, but we heard it. So, but my point is, it's, it's, it's his opinion. Maybe he was angry. Okay, but that's not the evil saying, oh, you're the boss. That, that's Has the point. it in a different context. But, but exactly. we, have also, we have also heard audio messages. In fact, we heard it before the presidential elections in which, you know, party leaders in certain communities, lucky to be precise, were addressing party supporters and they told them categorically that if you're not voting the All Progressives Congress in the presidential election, that you lose your livelihood and you'd rather uh, leave this community. So what did the uh, government do at that time, you know, to reassure non your uh, citizens that uh, they were safe and you know they had the right to uh, identify with any political party of their choice well I mean so that's why we all went around the state to campaign you know so basically you know uh, like I said some people take things overboard which is terrible again like I said to you I have friends I have friends in Alaba market I was at Alaba market and it was fun it was fun. And I know people, remember, there were Igbo APC members. So for anybody to go and say, oh, because you are Igbo, you won't vote, I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. So anybody that does that should be prosecuted, bottom line. So if it's a crime, then people should, should pay for it. So because to assume that because somebody is from one ethnic group is going to vote one way, it's, it's stupid. Yeah, I just wanted to know, you have said that anybody who's a, who does that should be, you know, should be made to pay for it. Are you thereby calling for the arrest of uh, Mr. MC Oluomo? Well, I'm not calling for arrest of anybody. You know, I'm not a police officer. I'm not a prosecutor. People will look at the evidence. And, you know, in case of MC Oluomo, he has come out to say that he was actually referring to one woman that is uh, Mama Chinedu or something like that. So there's a video that shows that. And that woman said, well, she, he was talking to me and that uh, we've been friends or my, uh, he, he's been my uh, customer for years, that he was talking to her. So, uh, I mean, so I don't know. I don't know the facts. I don't know the facts. So, but people should examine the facts. And if in truth he has broken the law, of course he must pay for it. It's as simple as ABC. So it's not, but my point, my point, which I want to make, because we all diminish this country when we, when we actually exaggerate what happens. That's my point. My point is that you have an election where you have this number of polling units and you have less than 1% that has a problem. And we now make it look as if that 1% is more important than 99%. I think that's just outrageous. Okay, well, and we should not diminish our country mm. and say the election is bad. No, no. This is a great election. Yes, elections. Atrocities were committed and yes, people should pay for Elections that. have come and gone. And all kinds of uh, permutations are not just going to go away. But governance never stopped. Absolutely. I saw the statement that you, you put out, as so many people have also seen it, as advocating for peace and all of that. But it has to go beyond talk, Dr. Hamzat. What will the government be doing in terms of communicating with people to ensure that we all continue to live in peace and harmony so that the progress and development that we have worked, all worked for doesn't go up in flames. Well, I mean, I think if you listen to the acceptance speech of Mr. Governor, you will actually also see that night where he said that's not the people we have. It's not about violence. It's not about ethnic bigotry. It's yeah, not about... My apologies. That's talk. Yeah. What's the action government Well, taking? I mean, so the, the reality is that's the way we've been ruling for four years. Or oh, that's the way we've been ruling this state for 19 years. That's why we have Igbos as commissioners. Well, that's why we have Igbos. That doesn't happen in other parts of the world. Or in other parts of our country. So that's why we engage with people. That's why there are Seriki outside in all communities in Lagos. That's why there are Igwes in Lagos. You understand? That doesn't happen in other communities or in other states. So that's why they are, they are a part of the involvement of everything. That's why we have, in each territorial district, that's why we have consultative forums of different ethnic groups. The same thing with religion. That's why we have uh, Nasrek. That's Muslim and Christian community across, the, across our, our local government. So that's why we have different sectors 
religion, ethnicity in Lagos that we talk to based on religion, based on this. So that's something that we've been doing. But I'm saying that there will be people that we always try to, you know, break the rules. We must punish them. The moment you punish them, it serves as deterrence to order to say, no, this is not the way for us to go. Well, there's so much to discuss with you, Dr. Ansad, but we're completely out of time oh. already. Let's just hope that one of these days we can bring you back um, here and have further conversation around this. But we have to think, hey, just one thing. Um, there's this issue around the Chrisland School that has just been reopened from what we, we gathered, uh, simply because well, we understand that the parents were, were shouting. What's, what's the latest about that? And is there any any deterrence? Because that's not the first time that it's happening at Christian School. So what really happened? So they had entire sport. So they left the school and went outside the school to a stadium. So the autopsy shows that it, it was electrocution. So what happened was there are all these vendors selling things. Unfortunately, the young lady stepped on one of the cables. So the question is, what is the protocol? Did they follow the protocols when you go outside your school? Where are the vendors supposed to be? What they, is that where they are? And all those things. So the investigation is going on. But as you notice, a lot of people have been charged. So it's, it's going to go to court. And of course, the court will decide what will happen. But a lot of people, the DPP has seen evidence that. But, but many some are people, wondering if Chrislan will still allow, be allowed to do business in Lagos. And the questions were asked as to why it was reopened in the first place after the first experience. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, well, I mean, I think, like I said, there are protocols. So what happened did not happen in their school environment. So when you evaluate a school, you evaluate a school, did they have this, did they have that? So um, for, like I said, they went outside the school to do an entire spot, okay. and they didn't follow that protocol. So for me, I don't see why the school should be shut down okay. permanently. Well, well, as I said, you know, there is definitely going to be more times to uh, have these conversations with you. Dr. Obafemi Hamzat is Deputy Governor of Lagos State, and congratulations once again. On Thank you very much. Election. Yeah.